We call this factfulness in Gapminder. You know, factfulness is a new attitude. It's being relaxed and only carrying strong opinions about things that are based on fact. It's very relaxing because you don't crash into surprises in life. If you have strong opinions which are not based on facts, you are going to have problems sooner or later. But if you join the factfulness movement, you will be more relaxed. It's an easier way of living to base things on facts. The first question you answered like this. Wow, many different ideas, no clear idea about it. Huh? And it's quite interesting then to get the right answer. And this we know quite well, it's eight. Yeah, how old are you? Yeah, you're not so old. The answer you gave is how the world was before you were born. That's quite the delay, isn't it? You have your entire lifetime to catch up because your average was about here. This was 30 years ago. 85% of the children get measles vaccine. And I am upset that it's not all. Because when I was a young doctor and worked in Mozambique, we had more than 2 million children dying every year due to a lack of measles vaccination. And in the district I was in charge of, we managed to raise the vaccination coverage to 80-90% in 1980. Now we have 85% in the whole world. And still we have more than 100,000 children dying every year from measles because these ones don't get it. And 100,000, 150,000 dying, what does that mean? That means one Ebola epidemic every month. And you see this much about it in newspapers. Because kids in the rich countries don't die from measles. Because either they have wise and clever parents who give them the vaccines, or they have strange parents who don't give them the vaccine. But then they, are, then they are protected, because if you have 90% vaccinated, you can, have about, you can have about 10 to 15% strange parents, doesn't matter. Because the, the epidemic cannot spread if most are vaccinated. And then if you would get measles in a rich country, you get so good health care, so you won't die. That's why people can have strange ideas in rich countries, huh? because they have good health service. Huh? And, 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 but it's 80%. Now, look at this, girls in school, this is how you answer. Ah, oh, didn't you know that 90% of girls go to school? Which world do you live in? It's strange, it's such a basic thing and you are not informed about it. Why are we not told about basic facts? This is not the detail. This is about realizing how this world is. It's the most basic thing of all. It's what all girls want. It's what all their mothers are fighting for. And there are women organizations and there are decent people around the world want. Don't you think that have effect? Some aid organization tell me, don't say that. It's so easy to collect money if they think the girls are not in school. There are people who doesn't have the interest to tell you this. Because they have the idea that it's better if you think it's just bloody miserable and Africans and Muslims don't send their girls to school. This is wrong. Have you heard about Malala? Did she go to school? Did she speak well English? Did she speak better English than me? Yeah, she was shot in the head and still spoke better English than I do. She was in college. In northern Pakistan, her father was a headmaster. She's an example of how girls go to school. And when the World Bank, the president of the World Bank asked her when she visited the World Bank, I was there and listened. And he asked her, why doesn't girls go to primary school? And she answered, girls and boys mainly don't go to primary school because families are so extremely poor, so they have to work to feed the family. But, she said, there are still some communities where there are cultural obstacles to girls going to primary school. She get it right, she's amazingly knowledgeable. But people don't listen to her, because she's a girl. She's used as a symbol. Huh? And what she says very clearly, we have gone to primary school, we don't want to study further, we want to go to college, we want to go to universities, we want the whole rights that we deserve. 
Many people think it's wrong of me to tell that girls go to school today, to primary school. I should be careful, to primary school. They say, oh, then you give the impression that gender equity is not the problem. Damn it, I don't. Not going to school is just so utterly stupid, old-fashioned ignorant. So the fact that girls go to primary school is almost no advance at all in gender equity. It's just that the injustice have moved from seven years to 14 years. And it's even stronger at the age of 14. It's even worse. Being seven years and being told by your father, you should stay home with mother, your brother will go to school, the girl will cry for one year. And then she'll just adapt because she has no chance. And she'll help her mother and she'll live her life in that way that was possible for her. But when she's 14, when she's been in school, when she's done better than her brother, when she studied seriously, she got a vision for her life. And father come and say, now you should marry this boy next door so we can put our fields together. And she wants to go doing something else with her life. That's panic. That's worse. So gender inequity, injustice to girls, get worse by the fact that they've been to primary school. So what is the main cause of death of girls from 15 to 19 years old? It's suicide, it's right. 20 to 24, it's childbirth. 25 to 29, it's HIV and AIDS. And that suicide is not due to deep depression, you know. It's more panic. It's more protest. Huh? It's more anguish. My life will be destroyed. I cannot do what I want. So many sides. There's, a, there's an epidemic even of, of, of suicide in young women in the world. And the main thing they use in countries like India, like... Like, like Asia now, is agricultural pesticides. One of the most severe health effects of agricultural pesticides is suicide attempts by young women. You see, this is how the world, that the world changed and that girls go to school doesn't mean that it's nice, it's even tougher. Many things are like that. You start to improve it, it doesn't get easy immediately, it even gets worse and worse. And you can see in India how brave young women are today protesting against rape protesting against violence and limitations because they've been to primary school. They have the vision. They want to go the whole way today. And their fight, fight now, it's much stiffer. It's much harder to get the right to marry when you want and to marry the one you want, you know, and to work how you want. But this you should know. This can't exist any longer. Now, these girls going to school, many of them go to schools that are of miserable quality. The teacher is ill-paid, often ill-trained. Sometimes the teacher is not even there all the days. Sometimes the girl has to stay home for periods. So it's not like, oh, nine girls out of ten go to nice schools, everything is fine. And, and this is a problem. Sometimes people here in Sweden tell me Hans Rosling is such an optimist. Damn it, I'm not. I'm not optimist. I'm worried about the world. Because I'm so worried, I go and look for facts. When you're really worried and concerned about something, you go and look for facts. And you see, this has been solved, this remains. This is where we have to move on. This is what has to be done. When you are just pessimistic, that, that's a state of mind, a personality, and you don't care much. You know, ah, this won't work. You don't go and are careful. Sometimes I call myself possibilist. I want to find out what is possible. Eh? Not to mix in emotions too much. Electricity at home, wow. it's 80%. It's 80%. Now remember this, 80% of the world population, 8 out of 10, have children vaccinated, kids go to school, and they have electricity at home, 8 out of 10. That's bad. It should be 100%. That's unacceptable. Why can't the remaining... 10 to 20% also have it. Those are the people who live in extreme poverty. They don't even have food for the day. They have to, can't think about vaccination, can't think about school. They can't afford electricity at home. So this is what we have to know. The world has improved and it's far from good. The world is so demanding, so you have to have two thoughts in the head at the same time. And that's a little demanding. It's easier to just have one idea. 
Oh, the world is fine. They are only quarreling, those nervous people. This is fine. If people work hard, they have nice lives. That's one attitude. The other is, oh, this world will go to hell. It's so unjust. More and more poor people, blah, blah, blah. You have to find a way. Yes, this has been better for these people. This remains now. And that you have electricity vaccinated children and girls in school doesn't mean life is fine. There are so many problems remain. A little, little effort is on. Now look at this, what you thought. Aha! One third on each. This is the same result I got and asked the chimps here at the zoo. You know, I took bananas and wrote A, B, and C on the bananas and gave it to them. So it's like random how you answer. Huh? This is how the Swedish population answers, because as I told you, Gapminder Foundation favor factfulness. So we go and study what people know. We use the web-based survey company. Huh? Uh, Novus here in Sweden, we use a Norwegian company, we use a British company, we use the United States company. And look, very few, you, you were my, more people here, because this is the right answer. Yeah, the number of children in the world have stopped increasing. Huh? And you were not told. It was the lowest number her here. The shims got 33% here. They beat the Swedes three times over. How come that people get this very low results? It's not because they are ignorant, it's because they have preconceived ideas. When the result of a group is worse than chimps, is worse than random, the problem is not ignorance. Because you are ignorant, you have a blank mind. I don't know, I press any button. I'll pick any banana. Huh? But here it's not so. There's an idea that number of children is just increasing, increasing, increasing. To me, the fact that the number of children in the world have stopped increasing is the biggest event in the history of mankind that was ever completely missed by media and education. And I don't understand why. I don't understand why. Length of life. Mm -hmm. It's 71. And this is interesting, isn't it? It's closer to the best than to the worst. That's a very important thing to understand in this world. The general health situation of the people of the world is closer to Japan than it is to Sierra Leone. You have heard about skewed distribution? That is how the people are, people are tending to in, uh, lean closer to the best than to the worst. What is the worst? The worst is malnutrition and infection and war. That's a minority of the world population. And you knew who they are. They are not vaccinated, they don't go to school, they don't have electricity at home. That's the two out of ten. The others, they don't get so many infections. They don't die from infections any longer. They are not malnourished. There are today in the world as many people who are obese, who weigh too much, as there are people who weigh too little. So it means that even here, when you go out of malnutrition and infection, you don't go into a nice, healthy life. Often you move into those terrible situations with high suicide rates. Psychiatric problems are worse in the middle-income countries, in the middle of the world, not the richest countries. The richest countries have less psychiatric problems than most of the world. And also other diseases are worse in the middle. Eh? But the worst of, they are really bad, they are really lagging behind. This, you were a little better, the right one is falling. Child mortality is falling faster in Africa today than it ever did in West Europe. Africa is really changing fast, the last 15 years. In the 1980s and the 1990s it was bad. There was political turmoil, economical crisis, HIV came, resistance against malaria drugs uh, caused, caused an increase. Then came mosquito nets for this, HIV turned around, still huge problem, but not getting worse, getting better in many countries, better means less worse, uh, and economies improving, and most important of all, the main determinant for low child mortality is education of women, education of mothers. 
And the strong effect of education on mother is partly because mothers learn things in school, can read and write, cannot be cheated at the pharmacy, uh, can argue for the right of their children, but it's also an indicator of what we call women empowerment. The fact that girls went to school, the fact that women, women can be in charge, yeah, can put their demands stronger, foster better decision-making in the family, yeah, and is in favor of children's survival. And this is poverty. Here you are also in the right way. Yeah? You have heard that poverty rate in the world has halved. It's going down. Uh, but when we ask the Swedish public, the Norwegian public, the British public, not to mention those in the United States, they were beaten twice over by the chimpanzee. Because there is, there, there is, there is a very weak overview understanding of the world. Now, everything doesn't get better. Yes, to, I want to show you this here graph immediately. This is the number of people who die in war as direct effect of war. Uh, it starts 1945, after the Second World War. This is the war with the separation between India and Pakistan. Really severe. We almost have forgotten that in history, how bad that was. The Korea War, you know, uh, was here, you know. And here we had wars in Africa. Here we had the Vietnam War. Here we had war in Balkan. And then things looked quite nice, didn't they? There was a little more war here. Then it looked really nice. And now, sadly, sadly, it is moving, it's moving this way. Even if we take that, it's going up. And it's two different types of war. The wars in the poorest countries, like Somalia, South Sudan, and Central African Republic. That's one type of war. The other is the collapse of nations and the civil wars in the Middle East, Iraq and Syria, and also Afghanistan, which is something in between. Huh? And that's, that's really sad that this is going in the wrong direction. So it means it's not like, oh, everything is getting better. No, you have to know what is getting better, what is not getting better. Yeah. There we are. I'm going now to move over to my other slide set there. I'm going to start to talk a little more about the people. 